ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد حضرين حضرات برادرس و سيستس سيستس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to New Muslim Community, uh, New Muslim Class Level One. Today we only have, inshallah, Level One. Inshallah, we're going to discuss a brief discussion about uh, tomorrow, our big day tomorrow, Aidul Adha. What are we going to do tomorrow? How are we going to perform the salah? What are the things other than the salah? Are the things that we need to focus on? First of all, before we start, Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is deserved to be praised of all the bounties that we received, all the bounties, the ni'mah, Alhamdulillah. And we are here to serve Him as the true safe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we, we were actually everybody um, had a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody in this world, uh, be it uh, George Bush, be it the, uh, who else? Who else? Huh? Mm, Michael Jordan. Ah, yeah. Everybody. Huh? Everybody, every single human being uh, had a meeting of, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before they were born in this, in this world, in this life. Uh, it is exactly in the plains of Arafah, where the people of Hajj, the Hujjaj, they went there yesterday, uh, people in Saudi, but we in Malaysia, uh, today is our ninth of Zulhijjah, so we had a bit of a, uh, differences, but it's okay. But anyhow, the people of Arafah, they went, the people of Hajj, they went to Arafah yesterday, and Arafah, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, Al Hajju Arafah, right? because the great, the biggest rukun, the rukun, one of the rukun, the pillars of Hajj is Arafah. If you don't go to Arafah, your Hajj is not accepted. So when they go there, so they make prayer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They they do a lot of ibadah there. It is free and easy, but the theme is ibadah. I've been there once. Subhanallah, it's a very uh, different kind of situation when you are there it's very hot it's very hot and the waters are hot and you are not in your in the best uh, condition it's very hot and it's very you know it's not what do you say so uh, comfortable it's not comfortable but you have to do ibadah because that is the place where inshallah your dua will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will come down to the prince of Arafah. But we, of course, we don't see him. So Allah will answer all the prayers of the people of Arafah. So there, everybody, the Hujjaj, millions of them, so they will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will they complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever they want. So at the peak of this, this uh, day of Arafah is when uh, Asr, Asr time. So my experience there, subhanAllah, uh, during the, before, when we arrived before uh, Zuhur, uh, during Zuhur, and then we prayed there with Qasar and Jama, and then we, we recited Quran, we do zikir and all that, we make dua. And then the peak, it was very hot. Even the, the waters, is very hot. You cannot even wash yourself <laughs> with the water, it's very hot. Uh, you, uh, until you have to take the mineral water to, to wash yourself. So, it was very hot. But until at the time of uh, Asar time, you can see, you can start to see 
clouds coming in. So I, I'm not, I'm not uh, making story. It, it happened with, in, in front of me. So everybody will go out to the plains, uh, outside from the camp. Uh, Arafah, they have a camps, a lot of camps. You can rest there, you can eat there. And then during this time, Asar, so everybody go out. Go out and then they, they supplicate to Allah SWT. SubhanAllah. Suddenly everything changed. All the, all the clouds come. SubhanAllah. It's like in the movies. <laughs> so, inshallah, uh, you can see a lot of people, they, they cry and they ask for Allah for a lot of things. All, all races are there. I saw the Turkish, I saw the Indonesian. But, uh, yeah, it was a uh, nice experience, a very different experience. And then, after and then Maghrib time before Maghrib they they go to Musdalifah. So I think now they are in Musdalifah, sleeping there, and collecting pebbles to stone the Jamaat uh, today, today the tenth of Zulhijjah. So the first thing they have to do is to stone the Jamaat Al-Qabah on the tenth of Zulhijjah. Now not, uh, we are still in Rafadi, uh, Rafadi. Uh, yeah, tomorrow Inshallah is our Eid. That's why we have to. Talk about Eid. Oh, I uh, I was supposed to talk about the, the the meeting with Allah, right? Yeah. So in the place of Arafah, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in Surah Al Araf, وَإِذْ أَخْرَجَ وَإِذْ أَخْرَجَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ عَلَى سُبْيَ رَبِّكُمْ and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, from the children of Adam, Allah takes of uh, Adam, his offsprings uh, in the form of souls. So Allah will spread all of them, the children of Adam in, in the form of soul in front of him in the plains of Arafah. It was re reported from the hadith Allah will spread them in the place of Arafah, the very place where they went uh, yesterday. So Allah asked them, Alas to be Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And this is the first covenant uh, from the people, from the humankind to Allah SWT that we, we pledge that, yes, Ya yeah, Rabb, yeah, you are our, our Lord. Ya yeah, Allah, we, you are our Lord. So that why? Antaqulu yawm al-qiyamah Antaqulu yawm al-qiyamati Inna kunna an hadha ghafilin So that why Allah do that? Because so that in the day of judgment uh, there's no alibi Alibi, right? There's no alibi There's no reason to say Oh Allah, don't know about this We forgot about this Because Allah make you forget And when you are in this world Of course the hadith Um Wulida ala al-fitrah Kullu al-mawlid Wulida ala al-fitrah Every child is born with fitrah This fitrah uh, We know there's a lot of birth uh, Taking care of you Created you and all that This is the ingrained in each Every human being And then What happened? Fa'abawahu The parents Yuhawidani Meet them, a uh, Yahud, how you know, he made them a uh, Nasara, made them a Christian, how you majisani, how you majisani, and then or become a Majus, uh, Zoroastrians. <coughs> hello, hello, check, check, one, two, three. Okay, is the battery okay or not? Hello, ah. <coughs> Maybe there's a uh, interference, a uh, signal. So, Alhamdulillah, that is the story of uh, our covenant. And then, we are here in this world. We are to fulfill the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know what is the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have you ever heard? What is the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us? And what is our heart upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's a famous hadith. Famous hadith from Mu'ad ibn Jabal. When he was riding with the Prophet. Hello, hello. 
Okay. I think I put this far further. Maybe this is the cause. When he was when when he was riding with the Prophet, so the Prophet Sallallahu asked him. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry. Okay. Tak dengar. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hear myself. Ah, okay. Uh, where was I? Okay, Kuntu Radifan. Ah, uh, Muhammad Jabal. He rides with the Prophet. So the Prophet Sallallahu asked him, uh, "Ya Muad, atadari ma hakulillahi ala ibad, wa hakul ibadi ala Allah." Oh, uh, Muad bin Jabal, uh, do you know what is the hak of Allah Subhanahu Taala upon his slaves and the hak of the slaves upon Allah Subhanahu Taala? And he said, Mu'ad bin Jabal, radiyallahu anhu, he said, Wallahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and the messenger knows best. Know best. And then, uh, the Prophet SAW said, Al-Haqqullahi ala al-ibad. The haq of Allah upon the slaves is, Allah yushriku bihi shay'a. Allah yushriku bihi shay'a. Ah, that is the haq, which is, and the ibad, the slave, yani us, we don't, Associate anything with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Shuriku bihi shay'a with anything that we worship Allah alone, alone without any partners, without any uh, connectors or any wasail wasila. Only straight to the point, straight directly to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And of course, we have to know what is our hak upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We have a hak. Ah. So, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Allah yu'adziba man la yushrika bihi shay'a," and Allah will not punish those who don't commit shirk to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this shows the importance of at-tawhid, tawhid, the oneness of Allah. We know the hak of Allah, As, because at-tawhid is the hak of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, and then. The best part is to continue at the end. The Mu'az bin Jabal said, ah, wow, this is so bad. Uh, this is so easy, right? You don't commit shirik to Allah. And then you can, you won't be uh, punished by Allah SWT. And then he said, Afala ubashirun nas. Should I tell the people? I will, I will tell, it's very good news. So the Prophet said, La tubashiruhum. Don't, don't tell them yet, now. Fayattakilu. Uh, and they will only rely on this. Uh, so that uh, Prophet wants them to be more diligent, be more hardworking in in worship. So, subhanallah, even though the Sahaba they know, uh, some of them they know they will enter paradise, but they they still do the best in their worship. And unlike us, unlike us. Alhamdulillah. Let us continue with our uh, topic today, which is Eid uh, al-Adha. The Salat, the Sunan, and others. You can see the slides, uh, beautiful slides, with the logo, New Muslim Community. Okay, so there are terms and words that we hear throughout this, this season of Hajj. Let us go through. First is Hujjaj. What is Hujjaj? Hujjaj means the plural of Hajj. Hajj. What is Hajj? The person who performs Hajj. So, those who perform Hajj, we call it Hajj. Uh, a bit longer. Uh, a bit longer, right? Okay, this is uh, in Arabic. Everything uh, in Islam, a lot of the terms comes from Arabic. Eh? Comes from Arabic because uh, the Quran, the Sharia is in Arabic. If you want to know more, you want to know in details of the deen, you want to know in depth, you have to learn Arabic, Arabic, eh? La Buddha, and Tatalamu, Alogata Arabi, yeah, huh? Okay? Wait, that is Hujaj, uh, not, not, not Hujah, not Hujah, Hujaj. Okay? Second is Manasik. What is Manasik? Uh, nusuk. Uh, the, the, it is the, the plural of Nusuk. Nasik. Uh, nusuk is, uh, Manasik is basically when you hear people say Manasik. It is related to how to perform the Hajj. The way to perform Hajj has been taught by the Prophet. So the Prophet said, 
Khudu anni manasikakum. Take from me your manasik. Ah, your manasik. Ahlan wa sahlan. Marhaban biki. Manasik, take from me. Don't take from others. So, whatever we do, those who judge there now, so they perform this. Who who did they take from? This 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 way. You go here, you go there. You go stone. Today, you only stone one akaba, and then on the days of Tashri, you can have to stone three of the akaba. Ah, the akaba or ula mustawa. This the small one. I don't. I forget. What is the name? It's okay. So the small one. Okay. So from where do we take this? This is from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ah, from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Next, udhiya. Ah, udhiya. You can see this is udhiya. When you say udhiya, what is does what does it mean by udhiya? Udhiya we hear a lot. And then also the Eid that we're gonna celebrate tomorrow is Eidul Adha. Comes from this word Udhiya. Alif Muat Ha Ya Udhiya. What does it mean? It means the sacrifice offered by the non Hajj, by the non Hajj, which means us, the people who doesn't go to Hajj, we offer sacrifices. So this sacrifice is called Udhiya. What is Hadiu. Hadiu means the sacrifice offered by the the hujjaj, the hujjaj. Uh, they have to do some sacrifice as well. For those who do uh, tamatung, which means they perform umrah first, and then later they go into hajj. That is a tamatung, tamatung. So they have to sacrifice an animal. Also, the people of Kiran who makes hajj and umrah together. So these things you will not. Understand unless you learn and you do it at the same time. Okay, same goes to me as well. When I learn first time, uh, it doesn't doesn't give sense. It's like, oh, oh, okay, it's very very difficult. Okay, Alhamdulillah, ala kulihat. Okay, now we go to nahr, nahr, nun hara, the specific way to slaughter a camel. So you see tomorrow it is called yamun nahr, yamun nahri. So nahr is specifically refers to the way to slaughter a camel. So a camel, you don't slaughter it like a goat. You don't lay it down. I try to lay them down. Okay, he will bite you. He will kick you. He will bite you. Okay. So how to slaughter a camel? You can watch in YouTube. You can see a lot of videos there. So one of the one of the way is they will make it stand and then they will fold the legs of one of the legs. And then so it cannot move, and then of course I think they will took close their eyes, and then they will cut from below, like that. So so the blood will gush down. That is a nahr. Compared to what we're gonna do tomorrow, inshallah, is a zab, a zab, a zal, ba, ha, zab. Okay, zab means the normal way that we slaughter the animal cows or sheep. This is a zab. You you might hear ah this is ah zabiha ah the the zabiha zabiha means the the meat of zabah zabah okay Eid means celebration ah we already discussed this ah last last week and manasik eh oh got two manasik alhamdulillah so you can just supposedly what is there ah it's okay okay alhamdulillah let's go next the days of Hajj the their names and their description. So, these are called the days of Hajj. So we have six days, starting with the eighth of the Hijjah. It's called the day of Tarwiyah. What does it mean by Tarwiyah? Tarwiyah means they are prepared. The Hujjah are prepared to move to Mina from wherever they are after they perform their Umrah, maybe from Makkah. So they are going to to Mina. They're going to Mina. Most of them they will reside in Aziziyah. Aziziyah is nearby Mina. Aziziyah. So they will go there. So they will go on the day of Tarwiyah, the eighth of Dhul Hijjah. So they will go in Mina and the camps of Mina. So they will stay there, prepare for tomorrow, the next day, which is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, which is the day of Arafah, the day where the Hujjah gathers at the fields of Arafah. So here, days of Arafah, the day of Arafah is the ninth. It's called 
nine, uh, the ninth of Zulhijjah is called day of Arafah, Yawmu Arafah. And the tenth of Zulhijjah is the day of Nahr, day of Nahr, which means the day of slaughtering the Udhiyah for us and the Hadiyu for the Hujjaj. For the Hujjaj. So, Yawmu Tarwiyah, eight, Yawmu Arafah, Yawmu Nahr. Sometimes they don't say the numbers, they just say what day is it. Oh, today is Nyamun Nahar. Uh, that day is Nyamun Tarwiyah. And so on, and so forth. 11th of Zulhijjah until 13th, we call the days of Tashriq. Huh? Tashriq. Uh, the 11th specifically, the first day of Tashriq, it, also called, it is also called as the day of Qar. Qar means, uh, qar means to, to rest. After you have go, went to the, uh, the 10th of Zulhijjah, when you do all the tawaf ifadah, the wajib tawaf, and then you go back to Mina to rest. And then to, to pelt the stones, eh, to pelt the, the jamarat as well. That's the day of Qar. And then the second day of Tashriq, which is the 12th of Dhul Hijjah. This is the day you can leave after you pelt the, the, the jamarat, after you pelt the three jamarat, and you can leave early for those who can leave uh, Mina on before Maghrib. Before Maghrib. So you have to leave Mina before Maghrib. If you are not able to leave before Maghrib, you have to stay for the third day. So the third day of Tashrik is the second day of Nafar. Okay, so if you leave the day before, you call Nafar Awal, early Nafar. Uh, nafar means you went, you go, go away. Uh, go away, leave. You completed your Hajj. And the 13th is the 13th of Zuhijjah is called day of, uh, the third day of Tashrik. The second Nafar, the, the, the final day. And this is uh, where your Hajj is completed. And then the holiday start. The holiday start begins. Okay? So now you can uh, start to take pictures and all that. Okay. So Alhamdulillah, let us go into uh, our main topic today is the Salatul Aid. Uh, we did this uh, last last two months with, with the Aidul Abha. Eh, eh, Aidul Fitri. Idul Fitri. Fitri. What does it mean by Fitri? Literally, it means breaking the fast. Iftar. Fitri. But Salat for tomorrow is Salat Idul Abha, which is Salat from, uh, came from the Abha means from the Udhiyah. The, the word for Udhiyah. What is it? Salatul Aid is a two sunnah, two unit sunnah prayer followed by two khutbah. You see? Number one. What is the ruling of Salatul Aid? What is the hukum? Can we do or can we just not do it? it uh, a lot of opinions from the scholars, strong opinions. Some say it's wajib upon every single Muslim because the Prophet Sallallahu never left it, never leave it. And that some say it is sunnah. No, no, some say it's fard, but it's fard kifaya. Which means if some of the, some of the community already made it, already done it, and the, the others are safe from sin. But uh, we take the opinion of Sunnah Mu'akkadah. But Sunnah Mu'akkadah is not Sunnah Mu'akkadah. You say, oh, it's Sunnah sahaja. Sunnah aja. No, Sunnah Mu'akkadah is Mu'akkadah. The Prophet Nabi Sallam, very, eh, he, he never abandoned it. Huh? Salatul Aid. So, let us do it. It is encouraged not only for the men, but also for the for the women to come. And it is um, okay. That is number three. Okay, sorry. And the timing, when do we perform this? It's the Duha time. Uh, after the sunrise, 15 minutes after sunrise, and then we, we can start to perform it. 8 o'clock is, is also called a Duha. It's around 7, 7.30. Now, Ishraq Ishraq, uh, um, Ishraq, what is it called? What is it called? Uh, the day, uh, when, when the Shuruk, Shuruk, uh, Ishraq, Shuruk is the same. Eh? Ishraq, Shuruk uh, is uh, 7, now there. 7, 9, 7, 9, eh? 7, 9. So after 15 minutes after Shuruk, you can start to perform Salatul Aid. So where to perform it? Is this a Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? They perform it outside of the of the mosque, uh, even though there are a lot of benefits, a lot of reward uh, performing prayer in in the Masjid Nabawi, 
But the Prophet Sallallahu chose to do at the Masalla, the open area, at the right side of the, um, the, the right side of the uh, of the masjid. Uh, to encourage, uh, so so when when if those who have a menstrual cycle, are in menstrual cycle, they can attend as well. They can attend as well to listen to the khutbah. So how many units? Okay, so the question. So it's not sunnah to perform in masjid. No, it's also a, a sunnah in masjid. Okay, it's no, it's also a, a sunnah to do in masjid. But we we maybe we can implement this once in a while. Do it outside. I think most of the countries now they do it. Uh, I saw in Perlis they do it. Uh, and they do it outside. So it looks very like a festival. Eh? It looks like a eat very very. Uh, it's like a celebration. My number four. How many units? Two units. Uh, two rakaat. Two rakaat. Like Salatul Fajr. However, there are seven takbirats. We will go through how to perform, inshallah. And uh, in the first rakaat, we have seven takbirats, and the five takbirats in the second rakaat. Let's go. How to perform this salah? First, of course, you have to uh, put an intention. Make intention that we're going to perform salatul aid. Intention is not from, from the lips, it's from the heart. From the heart. I still have another slide. Okay? So, from the heart. So, we have to intend in your. Yeah, in your in your heart, see, I'm going to perform salatul aid. Okay, well, for the sake of Allah. Next, takbiratul ihram and doa iftitah. Allahu akbar. So, uh, if you see in Malaysia, they say takbiratul ihram is not a uh, part of the seven takbirat, which is okay, is acceptable, no problem. Uh, this is uh, differences among the opinion of the scholars. So we take, uh, we follow like uh, the masjidil haram. Uh, the, like the Saudis, they say Takbiratul Ihram is part of the seven takbirats. Uh, so you say Allahu Akbar and you recite Al Iftita. Uh, Subhanallah, Subhanakallah, Hamdika, Atabaraka, Smukha, Ta'ala, Jadduka, Wala, Ilaha, Ghayruka. And it's Takbiratul Ihram. And then Allahu Akbar uh, for the six, the six takbirats after. So these takbirats, you can raise your hand. If you don't want to raise your hand, it's okay. It's okay. Eh? Don't don't fight on this small matter. So Allahu Akbar. Okay. And then you can say Allahu Akbar. You don't say. Uh, don't, you don't say like the say Allah. No, you just say Allahu Akbar. You can just recite it as long as you can hear it. Okay. So you can recite. So six times. Uh, so for us, we just follow the Imam. If the Imam forgot, so Allahu Al Musta'an. Oh, they would they would tend to forget because uh, we only perform this two times in a year, and some of them they Allah Akbar they will go to I saw this video they will go to ruko, uh -huh, they will go to ruko. Subhanallah, this is a problem uh, when you don't learn, right? Okay, next after you have completed your six tabirat, you will recite the Fatiha and the Surah. So from the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will recite Surah to Al A'la after Al Fatiha, and from the Sunnah as well, they will recite Surah. He will recite Surah Al uh, Qaf, Surah Qaf, Surah Qaf. Uh, if the Imam would to recite here, Surah Al Qaf, I think they will complain to Sheikh Hussein. Sheikh Hussein, this Imam recite so long, oh, three pages. Oh, oh Allah, Allah. So we choose to recite Al A'la easier for the for the Ma'amum, but once in a while, inshallah, if you, uh, if the jama'ah loves uh, to stand longer, and this is sunnah prayer, you can sit down. Uh, no, no, uh, it's okay to sit down. And then once in a while, we can do this sunnah, inshallah, right? Okay, okay. not tomorrow. Huh? Okay, so the faith after you read, after the recitation of surah, and then go to ruku'ah, ruku'ah, so you end this, the, the, the usual. Uh, standing and then go back to the second rakaat. Sujud, sit between the sujud and sujud again and then go to the, uh, the second rakaat. And the second rakaat, when you go up, you say Allahu Akbar, that is not counted. That is called uh, takbir intiqal. Takbirat intiqal. Takbir intiqal, which means when you are uh, moving from one 
one action to another action. It's called takbir intiqal. And next is the five takbirats. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, five times. So the question is, do we recite anything in between? Maybe you can, if you read in some fiqh uh, uh, books, they say, yeah, you can, you can recite something it was narrated by uh, Ibn Mas'ud and all that. But uh, from the Prophet, it, there's no any uh, narrations. So let us not do anything additional. We just say, Allahu Akbar, uh, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, inshallah. But if people do, we don't school them, okay? You, you can talk, discuss uh, with uh, academically, inshallah. Okay. Seventh is Al Fatiha Surah again after the Takbirat. And uh, here, the prophet, from the Sunnah of the Prophet, he will recite Al Ghashiyah, uh, the shorter version. Or sometimes he will recite Al Qamar. Al Qamar also around three and a half page, half pages. Uh, okay, inshallah, inshallah, one day we can. I'll try to do this. Ruku, sujud, and then taslim. Alhamdulillah. Finish the prayer. And then comes the khutbah of Ain. Um, it's a bit different from khutbah al Jumu'ah. Although the setting is almost the same, but there are some differences. First, the khutbah comes later. Like Jumu'ah. The kutbah before the salah, and you are. It is a wajib. It is a wajib to listen to the kutbah. If you don't listen to kutbah, you, you, you have to pray zuhur. Again, you have to pray zuhur. I mean, the kutbah is like two units of prayer. That's why you cannot uh, even talk. If you even play with some stone uh, in the time of prophet, if you play with some some stone, they say fakat uh, lagat. Your your ajar from the kutbah. Is, is invalid already, eh? very strict. But un, uh, unlike uh, Qutbah 8, it's very relaxed. Even the Prophet said, uh, after he had uh, finished the Salatul Aid, he will say, Inna uh, We will now give the Qutbah, the sermon. Man ahabba, man ahabba ayyajlisa, Falyajlis. Man ahabba ayyajlisa lil khutbah. Falyajlis. Whoever loves to sit and listen to the khutbah, they may sit. Man ahabba ayyadhaba falyadhab. Whoever wants to go, he can leave. So it's an option. It's optional. Okay. So the first thing is khutbah comes later after the salah. Second, it is permissible to leave. Uh, it is permissible to leave. Whoever wish to stay can stay. But it's good to stay uh, to have the vibe of Aid to listen to the khutbah, to listen to the mawaidah and the nasihah from the al khatib, and the third one is uh, two khutbah. Of course, it is uh, consists of two khutbah, short khutbah, not long ones, and one sitting in between. The imam will sit in between two khutbah, similar to al jumuah. Okay, so that is salatul aid tomorrow. Inshallah, we're going to perform. Okay, you can edit. <laughs> no, we're going to perform. Uh, not here, not here, okay? not here. We're going to perform in a masjid. Eh? In a masjid. Uh, here, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they, they don't have it here. Wallahu a'lam. Eh? So, go to the masjid. That is how we're going to perform it, okay? Okay. Uh, any questions? Okay, tomorrow, uh, the imam usually, they will, they will remind. They will remind the the ma'amum because we don't do this every day and the sunan of it okay before so tomorrow when we wake up what we should do first is uh, continue to make takbir takbir we will see after this is what is the takbir uh, starting from not uh, from eat night this is wrong this is eat night is for salatul uh, idul fitri for idul adha starts on the 9th of uh Hijjah. Fajr, Fajr time. So, the Fajr before, this morning, the masjids, masjids already start to perform the takbir. <coughs> Next, you can take a, the Eid bath. It's called the Sunnah bath. The Sunnah bath, Ghusl. You can, you can make an intention before you take the water, put the water on your head. You know the Ghusl, 
the the janabah. Uh, it's like that. You take wudu and then you you leave the legs before you wash the legs and then you go wash your body and then the end you wash your legs. The wusul uh, wajib. Okay. Next, uh, put on new clothes, better clothes, nice clothes and perfume. Uh, perfume for the for the guys. Uh, for the guys. For the ladies, don't put too much. Okay, don't put too much. Put uh, uh, careful. Uh, careful when putting uh, perfume for the ladies. Uh. For the men, inshallah, can put as much as you want. Okay. Next is uh, compared to Idul Fitri, we don't eat before salat. We eat after the salat. Ah, we eat after the salat. Okay. Next, take a different route when you go. You take a different route and you go back. This is the Sunnah of the Prophet. He khalafat turuk. He uh, take a different route coming and going back. And next, congratulate each other. Uh, usually, there's haba. They, when we meet each other, when they meet each other, they say, taqabbalallahu minna wa minkum. May Allah accept from us and from you. Accept what? Al-a'mal saliha wa your good deeds. Takbir. This is the takbir that uh, commonly recited here. There are a uh, few narrations of the takbirat. And the famous one is only two times. Uh, in the first one, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alham. But here, the famous one, we take the three, the three uh, takbir first. Uh, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alham. So this is the takbir that we can start to recite. If actually we can start to recite this during the first of Dhul Hijjah. Starting the first Dhul Hijjah, we can already start to recite. But not in congregation, not in the after the salat, after salat. It is called uh, takbir mutlaq. Which means anytime you want to perform, you want to recite it, you can recite. Anytime you want to say takbir, like say you, if when you are <coughs> cooking, you can say takbir. Cooking is takbir. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. And then, the ones that is started today, on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, <coughs> is the uh, takbir muqayyad. Ahlan wa sahlan wa mahlaban bikum. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We take your seat. Uh, make yourselves comfortable. Make yourselves at home. Uh, yeah, we just give some uh, some time for the for the sisters and brothers and the new arrivals uh, to open the tables. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do it later. Okay, okay. So that is takbir mutlak and mukayat. Mukayat means it is um, tied with the salah, tied with the salah. Uh, so every time you finish. The fard salah. Uh, 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 Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allahumma anta salam minka salam. Tadarak tayyad al-jalari wal ikra. Then you can start to do the takbir muqayyad. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu akbar. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd And this will continue until the third tashrik day. The 14th of Dhul Hijjah. So from, imagine from 9th to 14th of Dhul Hijjah. So five days we can recite takbir after salah. So this is the bigger celebration than the, the first one. The salah Eidul Fitri. Man, bigger. Five days. Man, five days we celebrate. But we celebrated Ilu Fitri one month. Right? Whether <laughs> where the, where the required day to, re, to celebrate is only one day. But Alhamdulillah, not that we celebrate one month, but the, uh, we, don't, we cannot invite everybody in only one day, so we spread it <laughs> into one month, inshallah. Okay, so that is takbir. So takbir means, uh, if you see the word takbir, it means uh, the the saying of Allahu Akbar. Uh, what is what does it mean? 
Allah is the greatest. Eh? We we praise Allah, we exalt Him. Uh, so this is the meaning of the takbirat. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. There is no ilah. There is no deity worthy of worship, except for Allah. And Allah is the greatest. And then this is all the praise of Allah. So most of the Muslims, what they say, is not something that they say. They usually they praise Allah swt because of whatever that Allah have given them. Okay. So inshallah, most of you, inshallah, I I believe that we will do sacrifice tomorrow. Uh, so these are the conditions of the sacrifice. It should be one of the al anam class. So al anam, what is al anam from the Quran? It is said this the four categories of of. Uh, uh, animals that we can sacrifice because these are the commonly uh, consumed by by people. So first is camel and sheep, cow and goat, uh, and it should be free from any faults that would render it unsuitable for sacrifice. So we have to choose uh, carefully. Don't don't make like uh, some 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 uh, what do you call that? Faults, right? Is something. Oh, you! I. It's called in Arabic. I, like, there's no, there's no horn. The horn is broken, or it looks very, very skinny. Uh, most of the people, disable, disable, disability, yeah, disability, or maybe walk like that. So we want to offer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We offer the best, or the the most expensive, the largest, man. So we sacrifice for the sake of Allah, the best of the best. Uh, you don't choose, uh, you, you don't ask for discount. Uh, which one is the most uh, least expensive? Uh, no, no, no. We give, we don't bargain with Allah. We give Allah the best, inshallah. So it should have reached the age stipulated in the Sharia, which is for camel. Uh, we don't have camels here, uh, inshallah. So camels, five years above. Uh, you have to reach five years and above. And cow, here, I have to reach three years and above. Goats, two years and above. And sheep, six months, you can already offer for sacrifice. So this is taken from alain.com. I translated it. I just translated it. Okay. And then the adab of slaughtering, of course. When you slaughter, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna Allah kataba al-ihsan ala kulli shay. Verily, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has written uh, perfection in everything that you uh, uh, we do. Ala kulli shay in everything that Allah have written perfection. Wa idha qatal tum fa ahsinul qitlah. Whenever you kill uh, the slaughter, the the sacrifice, kill it, uh, kill it well. Do it properly. Uh, do it properly. Wa idha zabah tum fa ahsinul zibha. When you slaughter, slaughter it properly. Make sure the knife is sharp. You don't make the animal suffer, etc., etc. So sacrifice after salatul aid. This is the adab. If you slaughter before, it will not count as sacrifice of aid. You have to sacrifice after the salat. Next, you have to face the qibla. If you are able to, just face the qibla and lay it on the left side of the animal. And when you when you slaughter, you say the name of Allah, Bismillah, and then you say Takbir, Allahu Akbar. So usually we say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then we slaughter. Do not slaughter in front of its friends. Huh? This one, I know it's very hard to do, but try your best to maybe close their eyes. Huh? Close their eyes from looking their their friends die, uh, dying. So we have to have mercy on them as well, even though we want to eat them. So we have to have mercy. Do not show the knife to the animal. Do not show the knife to the animal. Ah, do not show the knife. And also do not make the animal suffer, which means please make sure our knives, our our equipments are sharp. Very sharp. Okay? Like you can cut uh, papers. Man, you can cut papers. So make sure that one finish. One, two. Okay, so make sure all this is very important. This are from the teachings of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we want to kill the things that we want to eat, we kill it properly with perfection. 
So that is all for today, I guess. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of the of the class. Alhamdulillah. So before I end, I would like uh, to welcome the guest today. Inshallah, we will only have level one today because we have a reversion today. I, uh, if I understand. So, any questions uh, before we end? So tomorrow is our Eid for uh, tomorrow is our celebration day, our Raya, our Raya tomorrow. So that's why we go through these um, topics. No questions, I guess. Oh, you have question? Oh no, don't ask uh, difficult questions, brother. <coughs> Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Waalaikumsalam, so, uh, Just, just for general info. So, uh, regarding the sacrificial animals, the unarmed animals, uh, are they only limited to those four categories, or let's say, if um, a Mongolian Muslim, what if they would like to slaughter a horse? Will mm. that be okay? Or maybe in Indonesia, a water buffalo. Will those be okay? Uh, I asked the same question as well. And uh, when we look into the... Allah Alam, when we look into the books of fiqh, the jurisprudence books of the Islam, of Islam, no, we cannot. Because not everybody eat that. Not everybody eat horse. Not everybody eat uh, buffalo. Huh? Buffalo. Buffalo, I think, is one of the uh, family of the cow as well. But I don't think most of people eat. So we stick to these four. Because these are the animals that are mentioned in the Quran. Thamaniyata azwaj min al-da'ni thnaini wa min al-ba'zi thnain. Da'ni means uh, the biri-biri, the sheep. And min al-ma'z. Ma'z is the goat. And then wa min al-baqari thnain from the cows. And wa min al Ibilith name from the camels. So this four is mentioned in the Quran. Wallahu alam. You have to uh, maybe in Mongolia they have to ask the the Mufti of Mongolia. Okay, I'm not the Mufti of Mongolia, so they have to. Uh, so here, inshallah, we concern of our cows and and goats. Wallahu taala alam. Alhamdulillah. Only that is only the question. So I will end this class now. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, is from I don't know sister N A Y. Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Can we reply to people when they talk to us during the eat khutbah? Jazakallah khair. Uh, from the adab, no lah. Uh, we can try to follow the adab of Jumaat as well, but it's not as strict as that. It's not as strict. If if you can leave, or you can talk as well. But of course, it's adab. When people are talking to you, you don't talk, right? You don't talk to each other. So I mean, but, uh, don't talk to each other. Listen to the khutbah. Uh, maybe there are ayats of Quran that may give you hidayah. Uh, may you, may Allah give you mercy, His mercy. La'allakum turhamun. Wait, that's all. Alhamdulillah. So, with that, I end the class. Jazakumullah khairan for listening, for attending. And I hope it's beneficial for me as well and also for you. So, tomorrow, let us prepare. So may Allah uh, accept our uh, fast, uh, Rafa fast, inshallah. So may Allah pardon our sins and uh, make us among the the pious and the muttaqin. We end with tasbih kafara and uh, the salutations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.